Good morning. We welcome you to the Cathedral of St. Michael the Archangel as the Diocese of Springfield celebrates this rite of priestly ordination. Would you please join in singing our gathering hymn, Go to the World. Would you please stand?
As we gather, I wish to welcome all of our priests and deacons who have gathered here today, to our men and women villages, and to all of you, the families and friends, parishioners of our soon-to-be worship. I also wish to welcome from St. John the 23rd Seminary in Weston, Monsignor Brian Kiley, Monsignor William Fay, and Father Greg Parker, representing that seminary in the formation for two of our soon-to-be ordained. We pray for Father Ed Riley, who was supposed to represent St. John's Seminary in Brighton, whose father passed away and he will not be able to join with us. We also remember today that our Bishop Emeritus, Timothy McDonald, celebrates 56 years of priesthood. And a few of our priests ordained six years on his 50th anniversary are here today, Father Michael Pierce and Father John Crow. We thank God for the witness that they give to us in living out their ministry. My brothers and sisters, we hear in the gospel Jesus asking Peter, do you love me? It is a question that demands a response, a response that is given by the three candidates today in presenting themselves for ordination, a response that we are called to give to the Lord Jesus in our lives. Let us now open our hearts to God's forgiveness, responding, asking for mercy and his pardon.
Let us pray. Lord, our God, who in governing your people make use of the ministry of priests, grant a persevering obedience to your will to these deacons of your church, whom you graciously choose today for the office of priesthood, so that by their ministry and life they may gain glory for you in Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the goodness to me, the cup of salvation I will raise, I will call on the Lord's name, I will take the cup of salvation. in the eyes of the Lord is the death of the faithful. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. Your servant, Lord, your servant, and loosened my bonds, a thanksgiving sacrifice I make, 
A reading from the book of Timothy. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Until I come, devote yourself to pu the public reading of scripture, to preaching and to teaching. Do not neglect your gift, which was given you through prophecy when the body of elders laid their hands on you. Be diligent in these matters. Give yourself wholly to them so that everyone may see your progress. Watch your life and doctrine closely. Persevere in them because if you do, you will save both yourself and your hearers. The word of the Lord. is listening. You have the words of everlasting life. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus revealed himself to his disciples, and when they had finished breakfast, he said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, feed my lambs. He then said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. 
He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that he had said to him a third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. The Gospel of the Lord. Those to be ordained priest, please stand. Reverend Mr. John Yui Lay. Reverend Mr. Dennis Scavera. Reverend Mr. Paul Norman. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain these men, our brothers, to the responsibility of the priesthood. Do you know them to be worthy? After inquiry among the Christian people and upon the recommendation of those responsible, I testify that they have been found worthy. Relying on the help of the Lord God and our Savior Jesus Christ, we choose these men, our brothers, for the order of priesthood. Thanks be to God. They sat down, I guess they know how long the homily's gonna be. <laughs> for John Yui Lay, for Paul Norman and Dennis Squera, we gather together today in this church, giving thanks to God for the call that has been given to them and the generous way in which they are responding to that call. And really, it's summed up in the gospel. When Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? And when Peter responds, you know, Lord, I love you. What does Jesus tell them? Feed my lambs, tend my sheep. And so what Jesus is asking of Peter, Jesus is asking of Dennis and Paul and Huey today, Feed my lambs, tend my sheep. When Jesus asked Peter that question three times, do you love me? What Jesus was really saying to Peter is put that love into action. If you truly love me, you will bring my words to others. You will bring my presence to others through your life. And in doing so, you will allow others to know the goodness of God and to rejoice that they have encountered that goodness in their own lives. Indeed, as priests, our three soon to be ordained are called to do that. Feed my lambs, tend my sheep. They are called to do that in ways of reaching out to God's people in bringing to them the sacraments, those instruments of grace that Jesus has given to us as our helps on the way to heaven. They take on this responsibility of the office of priesthood 
because they have responded to God's plan of salvation, not only for them as individuals, but really as members of the priesthood ministering to God's people in the church. And so each and every day, Jesus asks that question, not only three times as he asked Peter, but every day, do you love me? And so as they awake each morning, they respond in prayer to the Lord God, thanking him not only for another day to serve him, but thanking him for the gift and the grace of being able to mediate God's presence to his people. Indeed, the priesthood into which they are ordained is one of service, of emptying out their lives for the sake of God's people. It's not an honor that is taken on for individuals, but rather it is the grace that God gives to them to allow his love to be mediated through their witness and their example. In gathering God's people to celebrate the Eucharist, the highest prayer that we have, they are to bring the presence of Jesus to the church. In being able to comfort those who are dying through the anointing of the sick and to help those who are on the way to recovery with that anointing, they are called to be the healing presence of Christ to know that no matter what struggles a person faces during one's life, and even at the end of life, that Jesus is present to them and reaches out to them in that anointing. The other sacraments which they will celebrate, they will welcome children and adults into God's holy church. They will forgive sins in the sacrament of reconciliation, the ultimate spiritual healing that we have in our church. And being able to say to a penitent, I absolve you from your sins. What powerful words they are to speak. Words that bring not physical healing, but rather that spiritual healing for which we all long knowing that in the forgiveness of our sins, God's grace pours out through them unto us so that we may know that healing peace that Jesus wills for his people. In this sacred act of ordination today, we carry on that apostolic line that was given through Peter to each one of us through these over 2,000 years of being able to be the church, to be the body and blood of Christ in the world. And so what a wonderful gift is bestowed on our soon to be ordained, a gift that is assured with God's grace, a gift that is given by God so that his church may be the presence of Jesus in our world. Indeed, Pray for them each day and for all priests and all those who seek to serve God. For in doing so, we are called to bring that presence of God to others in such special ways. And in doing so, we take on that responsibility of knowing that the Lord Jesus who gives to us that call also gives to us his presence to bring to others. Today, indeed, for all of us, is a day of rejoicing. We ask God's blessings in this sacred ordination upon Yui Lei, upon Paul Norman, and Dennis Galera. And we ask that as God gives to them this grace, that they may indeed answer that question of Jesus, not only on this ordination day, but each and every day for the rest of their lives. Do you love me? Peter said, you know, Lord, that I love you. May our soon-to-be ordained respond each day in that same way. Yes, Lord, you know that I love you.
Beloved brothers and sisters, because these are sons who are your relatives and friends are now to be advanced to the order of priest, consider carefully the nature of the rank in the church to which they are about to be raised. It is true that God has made his entire holy people a royal priesthood in Christ. Nevertheless, our great high priest himself, Jesus Christ, chose certain disciples to carry out publicly in his name and on behalf of the human race, a priestly office in the church. For Christ was sent by the Father and he in turn sent the apostles into the world so that through them and their successors, the bishops, he might continue to exercise his office of teacher, priest, and shepherd. Indeed, priests are established co-workers of the order of bishops with whom they are joined in the priestly office and with whom they are called to in the service of the people of God. After mature deliberation, these, our brothers, are now to be ordained to the priesthood in the order of the presbyterate, so as to serve Christ, the teacher, priest, and shepherd, by whose ministry his body, that is the church, is built up and grows into the people of God, a holy temple. In being configured to Christ, the eternal high priest, and joined to the priesthood of the bishops, they will be consecrated as true priest of the New Testament to preach the gospel, to shepherd God's people, and to celebrate sacred liturgy, especially the Lord's sacrifice. Now, dear sons, you are to be raised to the order of priesthood. For your part, you will exercise the sacred duty of teaching in the name of Christ, the teacher. Impart to everyone the word of God, which you have received with joy. Meditating on the law of the Lord, see that you believe what you read, that you teach what you believe, and that you practice what you teach. In this way, let what you teach be nourishment for the people of God. Let the holiness of your lives be a delightful fragrance to Christ faithful so that by word and example you may build up the house, which is God's church. Likewise, you will exercise in Christ the office of sanctifying, for by your ministry the spiritual sacrifice of the faithful will be made perfect, being united to the sacrifice of Christ, which will be offered through your hands in an unbloody way on the altar, in union with the faithful, in the celebration of the sacraments. Understand, therefore, what you do as you imitate what you celebrate. As celebrants of the mystery of the Lord's death and resurrection, strive to put to death whatever in you is sinful and to walk in newness of life. Remember, when you gather others into the people of God through baptism, when you forgive sins in the name of Christ and the church in the sacrament of penance, when you comfort the sick with holy oil and celebrate those sacred rites, when you offer prayers of praise and thanks to God throughout the hours of the day, not only for the people of God, but for the whole world, remember then that you are taken from among men and appointed on their behalf for those things that pertain to God. Therefore, carry out the ministry of Christ the priest with constant joy and with genuine love, attending not to your own concerns, but to those of Jesus Christ. Finally, dear sons, exercising your part, the office of Christ, head and shepherd, while united with the bishop and subject to him, strive to bring the faithful together into one family, so that you may lead them to God the Father through Christ in the Holy Spirit. Keep always before your eyes the example of the Good Shepherd who came not to be served, but to serve, and who came to seek out and save what was lost. Dear sons, before you enter the order of priesthood, 
you must declare before the people your intention to undertake this office. Yui, Paul, and Dennis, do you resolve with the help of the Holy Spirit to discharge without fail the office of priesthood in the presbyteral rank as worthy fellow workers with the order of bishops in caring for the Lord's flock? I do. Do you resolve to exercise the ministry of the word worthily and wisely, preaching the gospel and teaching the Catholic faith? I do. Do you resolve to celebrate faithfully and reverently in accord with the church's tradition, the mysteries of Christ, especially the sacrifice of the Eucharist and the sacrament of reconciliation for the glory of God and the sanctification of the Christian people? Do you resolve to implore with us God's mercy upon the people and trust it to your care by observing the command to pray without ceasing? Do you resolve to be united more closely every day to Christ the High Priest, who offered himself for us to God the Father as a pure sacrifice, and with him to consecrate yourselves to God for the salvation of all? I do. Paul, do you promise obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Yui, do you promise obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Dennis, do you promise obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Please stand. My dear people, let us pray that God, the all-powerful Father, will pour out abundantly the gifts of heaven on these his servants, whom he has chosen for the office of priest. Dominic, St. Francis Savior, Pray. 
Protect your holy church. Lord, our Keep the Pope and all the ordained and faithful service to your church. Lord, our Bless these chosen men. Lord, our Bless and sanctify these chosen men. Lord, Sanctify and consecrate these chosen men. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring all peoples together in peace and true harmony. Lord, hear our prayer. Comfort with your mercy the troubled and the afflicted. Lord, hear our prayer. Strengthen all of us. And keep us in your holy service. Lord, hear our prayer. Jesus, Son of the living God. Lord, hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. our God, and pour out on these servants of yours the blessing of the Holy Spirit and the power of priestly grace, that those whom in the sight of your mercy we offer to be consecrated may be surrounded by your rich and unfailing gifts, through Christ our Lord.
Draw near, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, author of human dignity. It is you who apportion all graces. Through you, everything progresses. Through you, all things are made to stand firm. To form a priestly people, you appoint ministers of Christ, your Son, by the power of the Holy Spirit, arranging them in different orders. Already in the earlier covenant, offices arose, established through mystical rites, when you set Moses and Aaron over your people to govern and sanctify them. You chose men next in rank and dignity to accompany them and assist them in their task. So too in the desert, you implanted the spirit of Moses in the hearts of 70 wise men, and with their help he ruled your people with greater ease. So also upon the sons of Aaron you poured out an abundant share of their father's plenty, that the number of the priests prescribed by the law might be sufficient for the sacrifices of the tabernacle, which were a shadow of the good things to come. But in these last days, Holy Father, you sent your Son into the world, Jesus, who is apostle and high priest of our confession, through the Holy Spirit, he offered himself to you as a spotless victim, and he made his apostles consecrated in the truth, sharers in his mission. You provide them also with companions to proclaim and carry out the work of salvation throughout the whole world. And now we beseech you, Lord, in our weakness, to grant us these helpers that we need, to exercise the priesthood that comes from the apostles. Grant, we pray, Almighty Father, to these, your servants, the dignity of the priesthood. Renew deep within them the spirit of holiness. May they henceforth possess this office which comes from you, O God, and is next in rank to the office of bishop. And by the example of their manner of life, may they instill right conduct. May they be worthy co-workers with our order, so that by their preaching and through the grace of the Holy Spirit, the words of the gospel may bear fruit in human hearts and reach even to the ends of the earth. Together with us, may they be faithful stewards of your mysteries, so that your people may be renewed in the waters of rebirth and nourished from your altar, so that sinners may be reconciled and the sick raised up. May they be joined with us, O Lord, in imploring your mercy for the people entrusted to their care and for all the world. And so may the full number of the nations gathered together in Christ be transformed into your one people and made perfect in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
the Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you, and sanctify that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifices to God. The Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you, that you may offer, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifices to God. The Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you, that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you do, imitate what you celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Amen. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you do, imitate what you celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. 
Understand what you do, imitate what you celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross.
God, our Almighty Father. O oh God, who have willed that your priest should minister at the holy altar and serve your people, grant by the power of this sacrifice, we pray, that the labors of your servants may constantly please you, and in your church bear that fruit which lasts forever. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant. And by your wondrous design, we're pleased to decree that this one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with the royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness, he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the paschal banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with your word, and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself, and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exultation we acclaim. <laughs> You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and giving you thanks he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, and glorious martyrs, with Saint Justin, with all and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Mitchell, our Bishop, with the Order of Bishops, these your servants who have been ordained today as priests for the Church, all the clergy, and entire people you have gained for your own. Lis listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the joyful hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory of yours is now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, the great High Priest. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord,
May the divine sacrifice we have offered and received, O Lord, give new life to your priest and to all your servants, that united to you in unfailing love, they may receive the grace of giving worthy service to your majesty. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Indeed, of course, no priest is ordained in a vacuum. There are the families who are so supportive of them, especially through the days of seminary on to their formation and to priesthood. So we're grateful to the families of our newly ordained, to the priests and those in the parishes who have helped them in their pastoral experience. Grateful to all of you for sharing your experiences and helping to be part of their formation. To uh, Father, Kai, Father uh, Riley, our seminary rector, and to all of those in the seminaries, both at Pope St. John the 23rd and St. John in Brighton, for the formation that our seminarians are given at those seminaries. To Father Michael Wood, uh, and to our new co-director of vocations, whom I'm announcing today, Father David Darcy. I'm grateful to Father Wood for his work with our uh, candidates for uh, priesthood, and to Father Darcy for accepting my invitation to be co-director of vocations, as well as continuing on as pastor of Holy Cross in Springfield. <laughs> Thank you. To Father Gary who, Daly, who was vocation director as our candidates started for the priesthood, to him and for his work, to all of our seminarians over these past years, I am grateful. <laughs> and of course, a priest cannot minister without an assignment in a parish. So I'm happy to announce today the assignments of our newly ordained. So Father Dennis Guerra will be assigned to St. Anne Parish in Chicopee with Father John O'Connor as pastor. <laughs> Father Huey Lay will be assigned to Mary Mother of the Church Parish in Lee, Massachusetts, with Father Brian McGrath as pastor. <laughs> Father Paul Norman will be assigned to St. Elizabeth Ann Seton in Northampton, Massachusetts, with uh, Father uh, Riley, Father Francis Riley as pastor. There we go. I would also like to express my thanks to all of those who have helped us to celebrate in this wonderful way, to Monsignor Chris Conley and his staff at the cathedral, to Sister Eileen Sullivan for our beautiful flowers that adorn our altar today, to Lad Pfeiffer and the members of our choir who have helped us sing God's praises on this wonderful day, to our masters of ceremony, uh, uh, Deacon Leo Coughlin, to Deacon Paul Federici and to Deacon Mark Kolosinski for helping us in this wonderful way and making our very complex ceremonies be so prayerful and smooth as they were celebrated this day. To all of you. Immediately after Mass, everyone is invited to the Marshall Center, which is to my right and your left through that door, down to the Marshall Center for uh, refreshments uh, after our ceremony and to congratulate our newly ordained. It is a joy to call them now, Father Dennis Guerra, Father Paul Norman, and Father Huey Lay. 
We thank them for their witness and this wonderful day that they have given to us through their response to God's call. Thank you. Let us pray now for God's blessing. May God, who founded the church and guides her still, protect you constantly with his grace, that you may faithfully discharge the duties of holy priesthood, we pray. Amen. May he make you servants and witnesses in the world to divine charity and truth and faithful ministers of reconciliation, we pray. And may he make you true shepherds to, to provide the living bread and word of life to the faithful, that they may continue to grow into the unity of the body of Christ, we pray. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Yeah. Hey.